Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers. I am the Carb Addiction Doc, and I really, really care about every one of you watching this video. So what I'm going to talk about today is really going to break my heart. It's going to break my heart very deeply. I am an MD, PhD. I'm board certified in general surgery, board certified in pediatric surgery. I am a metabolic health specialist. I work in the clinical space every day. I do science. I do. I practice clinical health care. I do talks. I do educational visits on this channel. But today I'm going to make an announcement that's going to break my heart. And a large part of it is survival. There's a mental health component for me personally, for my family, and there's also a financial overhead issue. So without being around the bush, as of January the 1st of this year, our practice is no longer going to take Medicare as a form of payment. And I know that's going to affect a lot of you. I know a lot of you have worked your lives to be on Medicare to have that safety net that is no longer there. Folks, it's, it's 2023, we're about to start 2024. Overhead has skyrocketed. My overhead costs are through the roof. Salaries are higher, payments are higher, everybody is coming with their hands out, and everybody knows doctors are high-hanging fruit, they got a lot of money. Well, that's absolutely a false narrative. The healthcare industry, without a question, without a shadow of a doubt, is on par with the military in terms of massive spending, massive wealth, massive profits. But that is not true about physicians. So in an era where our overhead costs, I've just calculated them, our overhead costs are up somewhere between a 20 and 25% in the last two years, in the last 24 months, our overhead costs have gone up by 20 to 25%. Medicare has decided to reduce payments to physicians by two point, sorry, by 3.4% next year. So not only have they never ever escalated payments according to the inflation rate, according to our increase in overhead, they've now decided to cut reimbursement to physicians. Not only are they cutting us by 3.4%, they make it increasingly impossible to seamlessly do our work. So if you're a Medicare patient and you want to come in to see me and I've got to, I'm going to prescribe a medication, it takes me between three and four hours to fill out the paperwork to be able to prescribe that medication to you. So we've decided we are not getting prior authorization at all for, med for Medicare uh, or for, for any insurances because it wastes our time. And it's basically a way that insurance companies are saying, no, screw you. But they're not saying that to their patients. Kumbaya, we're wonderful. We're the, uh, uh, we're the insurance company. It's your doctor that's the idiot. They need to fill out the prior authorization. Then we spend three or four hours filling out the prior authorization forms. And then they say, oh no, they're, for this reason, they didn't meet criteria. So we no longer do that for any insurances. Because I've got to keep the wheels churning and I've chosen not to do five and 10 minute consults. I've chosen to see you for an hour as a first visit and half an hour for a visit. And as those of you that have interacted with me know, we've always got time for you. Folks, you know, I don't wear scrubs just because, just because. I wear scrubs because I'm a surgeon. I'm not operating right now. But last night I was operating we have to sometimes have to respond to emergencies and i had a long day and i was dragging and i know i want to be at my top of my surgical game i want to be focused and attentive when i'm operating on someone when their lives are in my hands and i knew i was dragging a little bit i knew that i wasn't going to be eating through the day and i didn't want to do that but i didn't want to disservice my patients so about half an hour before um, we started the surgery I hit one of these ketone IQs. Now, did I need to know? I've got 30 years of surgery behind me. I can do that. But here's what it did. It got rid of a little bit of hunger. It helped me to hone in and focus, got me into ketosis where I'd even killed energy. And I was really alert, really awake and able to focus and did my best job with that patient. And the beautiful thing is, after I did that emergency surgery, after I saved that patient's life, and I uh, saved a patient's life. No, that was, this is a true life-saving experience. That patient did brilliantly well, and he's going to go home later this morning. That's what we do, and this helped me. 
Try it sometimes when you're hitting a speed bump in your life and you need focus and you need energy. But if we look at our Medicare uh, um, income over the last year, we build X amount and we know that we're not going to receive X amount. We build this amount. We were supposed to receive this amount and we ended up getting this. Because what they do is they push back. They deny, they deny, they deny. It's denial after denial after denial. And half of Medicare, the expenditure is going to people that are denying services. So you're paying salaries of people at Medicare that are denying your services. Just like the insurance companies, the commercial insurance companies. So let's say I prescribe Ozempic for a diabetic or for a person that could benefit from it from a cardiovascular or weight loss perspective. They deny it, even though the reasons are valid or may not be entirely valid, but they deny the medication. And then they tell you that your copay or your self-pay price is $1,200, $800 for a medication. What the, and, and they screw their patients. What they should be doing, they've got the clout, they should be going to the pharmaceutical companies and saying, dudes, let's reduce the cost here. Let's, let's us collaborate and we'll go with volume because everybody needs these medications. Let's go with volume. But what do they do? No, just like with insulin, they escalate and escalate and escalate costs. The cost of insulin went up 700% over 10 years until the government legislated to make it $25 a month. And it should be close to free if you've got insurance. But no, they don't negotiate with the, with the pharmaceutical companies. They're in bed with them. And they screw the physicians and they screw the patients. You, the person that's paying your health insurance company, is getting screwed. So I apologize for the rant, but it's deeply, deeply disturbing for me. We will still see patients on a self-pay basis. Absolutely. But that is a direct contract between you, the patient, and us, and we have self-pay rates. And you may say they're, they're through the roof, they're over the top. It still doesn't meet overhead. My wife makes more money than I do. My wife's in sales. She's damn good at her job, but she makes way more money than me. My practice is in the red this year. I cannot survive taking commercial insurance. It's just the reality. I think we do good work. But you tell your plumber, you tell your electrician, you tell your nail tech that you're going to pay them 20 cents on the dollar next week in three months' time. See how, see how good that is. That's healthcare. That's what we are on the receiving end of. And I know those, oh, you're a doctor, you're wealthy. Yeah, that was true in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. But we are no longer the shepherds. We are the sheep. And the shepherds are the healthcare industry, the business that regulates healthcare. But they're nameless. They're faceless. Those CEOs, those people making tons of money. And everybody's burning out. I'm burnt out. I love what I do, but I'm burnt out because I'm spinning my wheels and not making any damn money. So I apologize to you deeply. I love my Medicare patients, but I can no longer accept your insurance as of the 1st of January. We are jettisoning all Medicare. The math doesn't add up and I don't want to close my shop. I am so sorry to bring that to you as a Christmas gift, as a New Year's gift. But I am the Carb Addiction Doc. We will be here for you. But I'm having to work locum jobs to be able to support my practice because of Medicare that is the bulk of my patients that is screwing us. Think about that. Leave comments, please. Leave comments.